Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. In the few previous episodes, we've been using a freeware program called Inkscape to basically grab patterns from the internet and clean them up and prepare them for printing. This time around, we're going to be using Inkscape to design our own pattern. Uh, we're going to be creating a real simple pattern. It's just going to be a name plate or a desk plate uh, for somebody's desk and uh, it's a real easy pattern to create even easier to cut out and it really makes a really nice gift uh, especially for those in the office so the very first thing we're gonna do uh, after we launch Inkscape we get a brand new document we're gonna have to set the page size to the page size of which we're gonna print out so I'm gonna come up here to file document properties and that brings up our little dialog box. As you can see, it defaults to an A4. I'm in the US, so I'm going to select US letter. And then I'm going to close that dialog box. And now we're ready to begin. OK, so since we're going to be working with text, uh, we're going to use the text tool. It uh, looks like a little button on the toolbar that looks like an A. We're going to go ahead and select that. And somewhere in the middle, we're just going to click once. And it puts down kind of a cursor and we're going to go ahead and type in a word. Uh, I'm going to just type in whatever. So whatever. And now uh, it's a little tiny. It's hard to see. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. So I grab the magnifying glass and I'm zooming in to see our word whatever. Now I'm going to click the little pointer tool or the selector tool. And as you can see, I have my word selected. And what we want to do is change the font properties. Uh, the font properties are up here at the top. It looks like a T. We click the text tool or the title tool or the font properties. And it brings up a nice little dialog box. Now right over here we have font size. Uh, we're not going to be too terribly concerned about that because we're going to resize it a little bit later. But in order to make us see it a little bit easier, I'm going to knock it up to maybe oh, 32 points. and. Uh, we have uh, a couple of different boxes. We have the font family, and then we have the style. Font families are the actual font names, style, normal, italics, bold, etc., etc. So I'm going to select, looks like it defaults to Arial on my machine, but if I select that and I just uh, hit my little down arrow, you could see down here in the, uh, in the preview window what your word's going to look like as that font. So we're just going to go ahead and see what we could find. I like this impact. Very simple, very clean. Uh, I think that'll work pretty well for us. So I'm going to click Apply and then close the dialog box. And right there is our word. OK, so let's go ahead and zoom out again. So I'm going to grab the magnifying glass, hold down the Shift key, and that allows us to zoom out. And I'm going to select my pointer tool and we're going to resize this to the proper size. So if you remember right, up here in the corner here are our sizing properties. Right now it's at pixels. Uh, I'm going to switch that over to inches so it's something a little bit easier to uh, imagine. And right now it's about an uh, inch and a half wide by about a little over a quarter inch tall. Uh, that's much too small, so let's go ahead and enlarge that. I think something maybe six inches wide might look kind of nice. And uh, we need something a little bit taller than that, so let's make it two inches tall. Let's grab our magnifying glass and zoom out a bit. So magnifying, hold down the shift. It allows you to zoom out. And... You know, I think I kind of like that. That looks all right. So, way we have it now is uh, we have a word, but if we cut it out the way it is right now, we're just going to have a collection of letters. They're all going to fall apart, and you know, it's not going to be make a whole lot of sense. So we need a way to connect all of these letters so they're not individual letters. Instead, they're actually one giant object. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to add a base. So I'm going to come over here to the square button. Uh, it's in the t uh, toolbar there. And I'm just going to create a square. And we don't really see anything 
I'm not quite sure why, but if we look down here on the fill, you can see it's white. Uh, let's go ahead and change that to a different color. Let's go ahead. I'm going to choose a gray. So I'm going to go ahead and select gray, and now you can see that uh, my square or my rectangle is now gray. So I'm going to come up to the pointer tool, and we're going to go ahead and resize this. Uh, since this uh, base doesn't really have to be all that tall, it just needs to be tall enough to hold all the letters, let's go ahead and resize the height to, I don't know, half an inch. So 0.5, and now we're starting to get a base put together. Now if you remember the uh, whatever is 6 inches wide, you can see it right up here at 6 inches wide, so let's go ahead and make this base 6.5 inches wide. So I'm going to go 6.5, hit return, and there we go. So let's go ahead and just zoom in just a tish bit more, just so we can see it a little bit easier. That might be a little bit too much. Let's back out a little bit. There we go. Grab up to the pointer, and we're just going to go ahead and position this uh, just so that it'll kind of hold all those letters together. OK, so this isn't necessarily centered. We just kind of eyeballed it. So we're going to come up to the align and distribute. We played with this before. So what we want to do is we want to select our base, hold down the shift key, and select our lettering. And you can see we have both of them selected. And we're going to center them based or relative to the selection, what we have selected. So I'm going to just go ahead and click the center. And what that's going to do is nudge everything over. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, zoom out a little bit just so you can see that. And in order to make this a little bit more extreme so you can kind of see what's going on, let's go ahead and nudge it over a little bit. So again, we just select the base, select the lettering, and align relative to the selection. We hit the center button, and as you can see, it lines everything up. Well, we don't need this anymore, so let's go ahead and close that. And uh, let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more. And I'm going to show you kind of a nice little trick. Uh, right now, these are kind of squared ends. Makes it a little bit boring. So let's go ahead and grab our node editor. Our node editor is this little, uh, I don't know, it looks like a little triangle. And what I do is you click that, click our base. And up here in the right, upper right hand corner, you'll see this little circle. What that circle does is if you grab it and you pull it down, see how it rounds those corners? So we're going to go ahead and round those corners. I'm going to just bring it all the way down and uh, release that. And now we have a nice little rounded corner. Unfortunately, we also have a rounded corner on the bottom. We don't really want that. We want to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come up to the pointer again, and I'm going to select the base. I'm going to hit Control D. Control D means duplicate. You could also find it in the uh, Edit menu. Uh, let's see if I can find it right here. Duplicate. So we have this duplicated, and now we have two copies. One is on top of the other. So I'm going to take this top one, I'm going to just change the color just so you can see it a little bit easier. I'm going to change the top color to red. So now I have two objects. We have the rounded uh, square on the top and also a rounded square on the bottom. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so you can see them both. So I'm going to come back here to the node editor once again, and I'm going to grab this circle here, and I'm going to bring that back up so now it's nice and square. And now I'm going to grab the pointer tool once again. And now, as you can see, we could kind of bring that up to the halfway point. And now this bottom part will be square, whereas the top part will be kind of rounded. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to combine both of these as one object. So I'm going to grab the, uh, the gray square. I'm going to grab the red square. Uh, just by holding down shift so you can see both of them are selected and I'm going to come up here to path and I'm going to select union. And what this does is it's going to weld the two pieces together. So I'm going to select that and now it's one piece with um, 
with the rounded top and the squared off bottom. Now we're going to do that same thing to our lettering. So I'm going to grab the lettering and I'm also going to grab the base and I'm going to come up to uh, path union and once again we have our lettering welded to the base. So let's go ahead and change this pattern to gray. You remember right I like having gray patterns with a black outline so I'm going to right click on the black and set the stroke and now as you can see we have a nice little pattern, gray pattern, black outline which will makes it really easy to cut. Okay let's zoom out a little bit. Okay so now we have the lettering, now we need a base. So again we're going to grab the square and we're just going to throw something in. Come up to the pointer so we could adjust the size. Uh, you remember right this is uh, what six and a half inches wide. Let's make this seven inches wide. That gives us a, a um, quarter inch on each side which was I think it works real nice. And let's make this uh, let's make it an inch and a half tall. That gives us about uh, oh I don't know um, a little over half an inch on each side. So let's let's kind of go ahead and go with that and let's select both of these and let's go ahead and center them up. So I'm going to hit the align and distribute relative to the selection and click that and now let's close up that window and zoom out. Now we have a pattern, a word with the base on top of a base and if you wanted to adjust the roundness of the square you could come in here with the node editor and you could adjust that. I just want it slightly rounded on the edges. Something that just kind of knocks off the edge a little bit. Okay let's zoom out. Okay now let's uh, select both of these and I'm going to just group them as one object so I can move them around nice and easy. So if you remember right we just select both of them. Come up here to group selected objects and now they're kind of one object now and I can move them as a group rather than individual objects. So let's go ahead and create another pattern. Uh, just kind of a quick review. So I'm going to do my son's name. I'm going to select the, the uh, title tool. I'm going to click in there and I'm going to type in my son's name, Gavin. Okay, let's grab the magnifying glass and zoom in a little bit so we can see it. And then grab the pointer, click the the name, and then we'll click the uh, text tool. And let's go ahead and just use that same one, the impact. I'm going to click apply and close that up. And let's go ahead and uh, uh, resize this. So let's go ahead and make it, uh, oh, I don't know, um, let's make it five and a half inches wide two inches tall. We'll zoom out. Okay, so there's his name. Let's zoom back in so we can see it a little bit easier. Now if you remember right, we need a base. So let's go ahead and throw in a s square. I'm going to square this up a little bit so that it's easier to work with. Uh, now I have my pointer. Let's make it a half inch tall. It's, uh, let's see, Gavin was uh, five and a half inches wide, so let's make this six inches wide. I'm going to go ahead and nudge that up so that we connect all the letters. That works pretty good, so let's go ahead and center that back up. Hit our align and distribute. Center upon the selection. Let's go ahead and close that and zoom in. Let's go ahead and select our base, round it up, choose my pointer tool, come up here to edit, duplicate, let's change that color to something a little bit easier to see, grab my pointer once again, I'm going to shrink this down, let's square up that up a little bit, and now let's kind of find the halfway point, and there we go. So I'm going to select the gray box and the red box. I'm going to come up to Path, Union, 
that creates one object. I'm going to select the text and the base and once again union that didn't quite work. Let's uh, control Z that out. It looks like it needs to be nudged up just a little bit more. I didn't have it quite right. So I'm going to select the lettering and the base. Once again, come up here to path union. Yeah, that looks much better. So let's go ahead and change it to a gray pattern. Black outline, set the stroke to black. And uh, there's our lettering. So let's go ahead and create our base. I'm going to select that. I'm going to make it uh, uh, make an inch and a half wide. Let's make it, let's see, Gavin is now six inches wide. Let's give it a quarter inch on each side. So let's go six and a half. Something along those lines. So I'm going to center both of these pieces on top of each other. So I'm going to come up to align and distribute. Center upon the selection. I'm going to close that up. And now I want to make this as a group so I can move that around as a grouping. So I'm going to come up to Group, Selected Objects. And now we have two patterns on one page. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you could shoot me an email at scrollsawgoodies at gmail.com. Uh, you can leave a comment on the blog at scrollsawgoodies.com. Or if you'd like to uh, ask a few questions in the forums, we'd be glad to have you. And uh, you could see us over at scrollsawvillage.com. And hope you enjoyed this, uh, this little demonstration. Until next time, happy scrolling.